Hello everyone, this is the World Chocolate Masters World Final. My name is Virginie Klaas and I will be your host for the two next day, as today is the second day of this World Final, where 18 chefs, 18 finalists from different countries all over the world are battling it out and showing us that they have all it takes to become the best chef of the world and to show us what the chocolate delights of tomorrow will look taste and feel like. Well, yesterday was a long day, a fierce day, but we have a top three ranking so far with Greece, Poland and Belgium. But remember, today, the second day, they're working on new assignments and everything can change. Tonight, our jury will reveal the 10 super finalists and only those 10 will make it to the final day tomorrow. So get ready. And luckily for me, I'm having my lovely co-hosts and chefs, Julie Sharp, Alexandre Bourdeau and Marc de Marquette, who will be all over the place to see what is happening and going on. So from time to time, they will break in with some breaking news. Our finalists are for the moment working, the finalists of Group 2, on their assignment for today. And that is the hashtag taste and the hashtag bonbon. But before I'll give you a glimpse on how they are doing, let's watch what happened before and why the assignments of today are so challenging. They are finalists. I hope you all performed super well yesterday. For the second day of the World Chocolate Masters World Final, we have two new assignments to you. The first one is taste. Tomorrow's taste starts with all natural and fresh ingredients. Your first assignment today is to create a delicious chocolate pastry made completely from scratch. You can only use fresh ingredients and you need to include one typical local ingredient that is grown or made close to where you live and work. So nothing pre prepared, only 100% ingredients. The jury expects beautifully patisserie of tomorrow with the cacao barley chocolate of your choice and a super exciting flavor combination. So good luck guys. Your second assignment is bonbon. And bonbon is all about your interpretation of the bonbon of tomorrow. In other words, what will the bonbon of tomorrow look, taste and feel like? You can use any technique in bonbon making. It needs to have at least two different textures and it needs to be made with all natural fresh ingredients. And it needs to have an original design or shape that surprises, of course, the jury. Be creative, let nature inspire you on today's assignments and impress the jury. Good luck with taste and bonbon. Yes, yes, good luck, dear contestants, and thank you, Ramon, for showing us what these assignments are about. Dear viewers, if you would like to follow the whole full live stream without any interruptions, go to the official website, worldchocolatemasters.com, and do not forget that there you can also cast your vote for your favorite chef and your favorite shopping winner. So you will decide who is going home with the public award. So our contestants are already in the middle of the battle and this morning they had to pick up their cells their ingredients for their first assignment the hashtag taste so let's watch how that happened at the fresh market welcome to day two of the world chocolate masters i'm here with group two from yesterday i'm here with the nine finalists so i'm just going to check how they're feeling after last night so nicholas can i ask you did you sleep well well i slept a little but well Still, I feel energized. You've got that nervous energy. That's good. Yes, good. And Stephen, how are you feeling about today? Uh, very similar to Nicholas. Um, energized, ready to go, and looking forward to the, today. Brilliant. OK, so let's start the competition. Everybody, five, four, three, two, one, off to the market. <laughs> Thank you. 
What an exciting, energetic start of the day working on the second assignment. Mark, where are you, how are you, and especially, more important, how are the contestants doing? Good morning, Virginie. Well, you know, there are a lot of questions here, but let me go straight to Nicolas from Greece. Nicolas, you have a wonderful concept you'd like to share with us about taste, and it's called Coco Evolution. Tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, yes, of course. Well, Coco Evolution is a dessert, it's a completely bioactive dessert, which means that just by eating one, you get all your pri probiotics for a day, but also it is tasty and also it features a, a regional mandarin from Kios Island, which according to Taste Atlas has one of the best tastes in the world. And uh, it's, it's proven to calm you and also improve your mood. So this holistic approach is the evolution of cacao for me. Oh my goodness, I need a lot of this because I need to calm down and enjoy because I'm very nervous. I don't know how you're feeling, but are you feeling better today than yesterday? Yeah, well, I'm feeling uh, certainly I'm more familiar with the space, so it's, it feels better. Coco Evolution is working on you, it seems. Thank you very much, Nicholas. And uh, Julie, what's happening around Korea? Yeah, I'm here with Dong Suk in Korea, and uh, he's already working on a, a crunch layer for his bonbon. But this bonbon is really, uh, truly inspiring. So it was um, thought about from the seed banks of the world. So we're worried at the moment that a lot of the plants are becoming extinct. And so Don Suk has thought if he could make a super seed with all the genes from the plants that are becoming extinct, and this seed will be able to grow anywhere in any condition, um, and it will be able to provide food. So I think that's truly inspirational. I'm here uh, in front of the workstation of a uh, yuke representing Spain. And I want to show you a very interesting uh, technique of uh, decoration. Look at this mold and look at the detail that you have inside the mold. Very beautiful. You just finished the technique, but I will explain you how he did this one. He created this stamp, beautiful stamp, and this is done with a 3D, 3D printing of a silicone. It's a very stuff. He basically set some chocolates around the silicone mold and then he press and he has this beautiful texture inside the mold. Wow. Well, here I am with Anna, who's working so quietly and beautifully. The grammage what she's piping into her molds right now. But there's something I really want to ask her, and it is why has she chosen as a fundamental ingredient is the wild strawberry. <laughs> so, Marta, can you tell us a bit more about this, these wonderful strawberries? Yes, of course. She loves wild strawberries, and she, as she knew she would participate to World Chocolate Master, she said, OK, I want to bring my strawberries. So these are the strawberries, yes. the wild strawberries she's cultivating in her own nursery, in her own greenhouse, yes. And it's five different varieties of uh, wild strawberries. Wow. Yes, so she, it, will have, it will have a bouquet of wild strawberries. You know, I can't wait to taste these because just one wild strawberry just gives you a punch of flavour. Now, a whole array of different varieties of wild strawberries must be absolutely fantastic. And why the wild strawberry particularly? Is it because that she grows them or is it because she just loves strawberries and wanted to push it further? Because for uh, this assignment, she focused on sustainability and so she wanted to bring something local like wild strawberries and like the lemons she's, she's using. And, and of course, because wild strawberries are amazing. <laughs> well, do you know, it's all amazing. And I think she we, just by listening Listening and understanding these ingredients, taste is firmly what Anna's focused on right now. Judy, I bet you've got some nice stories to tell us. Yes.
Okay, I'm here with Issam from Morocco, and he's busily getting on with some of the components for his bonbon. So, could you just tell me what it is that he's actually doing at the moment? Uh, yeah, Issam's doing uh, the, the crunchy, crunchy as a nut for his task bonbon, hashtag bonbon. So, he, he just uh, mixed all the ingredients together, and, uh, and after that, he will set a little bit in the fridge um, to make his, his bonbon. Brilliant, thank you very much. And also, Issam, his, uh, like his uh, theme is all about the sun. It's all about renewable energy. And you know, the sun is the best source of renewable energy that we can all use. So you're going to see that coming through his hashtag taste. Well, do you know, we were just a few moments ago with Anna with some wild strawberries and the aroma was there, but here I am on Stephen's work table, table and guess what? I've got more strawberries. I'm a really happy bunny right now. Now, one of the beauties of World Chocolate Masters is that we're looking at different flavours, we're looking, looking at different combinations, and here it's about taste. So, Stephen, I know that you have some beautiful strawberries all the way from Yorkshire. Yes, so they are from Annabelle's Farm, which is seven miles from my house. So she's a local farmer. Uh, I brought them over the other day. They are fantastic. Uh, I have a great flavor. I'm going to come back to you in a moment, Stephen. And Julie, however, you've got something that you want to show with us. Yes, I'm here with Jiro from Japan, and he's just about to start doing the second layer of his bonbon. And it was a really interesting technique. Um, he was using frozen metal rods to try and build his, uh, his bonbon, and he's doing different layers as well. So he's frozen the, the actual metal, um, and you can see he's actually had to make this specially. It's uh, totally designed by himself, and it's a brand new technique. So he's already done his dark layer of chocolate first thing this morning, and now he's on to the second layer. So we're building up beautiful colors and texture. And look at that, you get that beautiful shape and a really sharp point at the bottom. ganache with white chocolate okay. and vanilla for the second day. Okay, so day was... when we were just looking at this earlier, I thought it was actually chocolate, but it's even more fascinating. It's actually ganache. So we had the first layer of a dark ganache, and then the second layer is a white chocolate ganache. And the last one's going to be with milk chocolate. Okay. So just to shape it up and the dust shape of it. So you got all the chocolate that's going to be used, the dark chocolate, the milk chocolate, and the white chocolate are going to be present in the bonbon here. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you.
Well, this is just so thrilling. We are just jumping from side to side, from, from bench to bench. Why? Because, of course, at the World Chocolate Masters, we're seeing new techniques, we're seeing new innovations, and we're seeing and smelling, and we're going to be tasting some amazing taste. I'm back with Stephen again, who I can see some beautiful strawberries that are in a jelly with, I guess, some tarragon, is that right? So it's a tarragon cremeux with uh, zephyr caramel put through that. There's a vanilla zephyr caramel, quinoa crisp with uh, zephyr caramel through, and fresh strawberry compote. Oh, my goodness. OK, judges, it's only me. I tip. I want the whole lot because, of course, I'm a fan of strawberries, but, I mean, what I've just heard right now, it's just making me very jittery. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to have to stay here for a little while, so I'm sorry, guys. We're going to focus a little bit more time on Stephen because the smell is just delicious. And hopefully, I'm going to keep this and you're not going to see me eat it. I'm here with Luke from Spain and he's working on his bonbon um, and this is inspired by the dry cracked earth of the of Spain. Bueno, de todo el mundo al final es un poco de conciencia sobre qué está pasando con el planeta y nos estamos quedando sin agua, por lo tanto, las grietas de la tierra seca yo creo que es el hilo conductor de todas mis pruebas y también para hacer un poco de conciencia sobre qué estamos haciendo con, sobre el planeta. Thank you and translation? Yes. Uh, for me it's important to represent the cracked land. Not, not in here, not all in the Simons, not on the whole earth. And to, to share with everybody that's the dry important uh, moment that it's happening now in the world. Okay, thank you. And the flavors that are gonna go into this bonbon? It's gonna be... <laughs> Los sabores de aceite de oliva y, y limón, sabores mediterráneos también de, de mi zona, y que recuerden un poco también al, al clima de seco y de, 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 de ingredientes que, que sobreviven a climas muy secos. It's all about the Mediterranean flavors, like the lemon, olive oil, and also salt inside. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Nice and fresh. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here now with Carlo from the Netherlands on his work table. Now, he's, he's busy piping some beautiful molds that he's had made. They're molds of the oak leaf. And you will remember from yesterday that that is a beautiful shape that he's used throughout the competition so far. But I have a particular question I would like to ask, which is about sea buckthorn. It isn't an ingredient we see very often, and it is sometimes a bit too challenging for chefs. But of course, here at the World Chocolate Masters, we don't want anything that's too easy. We don't want anything that's too simple. We want something that's challenging. So, Carlo, if you could tell us a little bit more about the role of the sea buckthorn in this recipe for taste, please. The sea buckthorn is, is growing in our dunes in, uh, in Nordwijk, where I live. So I, I, uh, I picked, them, uh, picked them up uh, two days ago. So, uh, yeah, typical Nordwijk, typical Dutch. Um, and the Dutch vanilla is also in, um, in, in my product, in my taste. Uh, Dutch vanilla since two years growing in the Netherlands. Really? Yeah, really. It's a nice big pot and uh, incredibly a taste. So, uh, perfect. Well, thank you very much. So there we have it, a first Dutch vanilla that is grown here in, in Europe, so obviously the Netherlands. So we're reducing the air miles. It's not flown all the way from Tahiti or from, you know, but uh, I believe, Alexander, you've got something rather exciting to show us right now. Yes, Mark, indeed. I'm just here in front uh, of our Greek uh, contestant, Nicolas, and look at his playing with uh, nitrogen and is basically creating some capsule, as you said, of uh, mandarin. So putting some uh, nitrogen on this uh, liquid mandarin fresh juice and by crushing it, okay, he just uh, creates this uh, little capsule of uh, mandarin. I can tell you the smell is just incredible. Well, now I'm here with Antoine from France, who is now busy spraying his beautiful molds. 
Uh, this is going to be a first that we're going to see at the World Chocolate Masters, thanks to uh, the wonderful people that are behind making these wonderful molds um, and a chocolate world. And of course, he's now spraying them with cocoa butter, colored cocoa butter. I, I believe it's actually chocolate. Um, so it is, he's using pure cocoa in order to color the mold. Um, and in doing so, he needs to make sure that the temperature of the cocoa butter is absolutely perfect to get the right sheen, but more importantly, to avoid a disaster that the chocolate sticks to the mold. So in a moment, we'll ask him a couple of questions, but I think it's a bit of drama, you know, first thing in the morning, just to see this sort of plume of cocoa butter flying around. We're all gonna get sort of a nice feeling and the smell of chocolate, and why not? We're, at, after all, at the World Chocolate Masters, aren't we? So um, no better than having a wonderful smell of chocolate around us. Well, thank you very much, dear contestants of Group 2, not only for getting up so early to get the show running, but especially showing us how you've been preparing for this competition. We saw a lot of original, creative, new techniques and wondering how this uh, hashtag taste will taste like. I'm totally ready, I hope you too. And as mentioned before, yesterday was already a very tough and fierce day for the contestant with a lot of surprises, but also some disappointments. Let's have a look at the highlights. Dear Nicolas, for the hashtag share, you had 63 points. 
it's exciting just to be here, so a good result for all the hard work, especially when you do it by yourself. And with minimal help, it's really, really rewarding. I enjoy when I make something and people really, um, you know, vibe to that. They understand it and they feel uh, like uh, they understand the feeling and the story behind it. So that's actually the best, uh, the best feeling for me as well. Good start for Luke as you have the hashtag share with 59 points. And the hashtag wow, 77. So a total of el primer día ha sido, ha sido brutal, ha sido muy intenso, ha salido todo bien. A la pieza sí que le faltaba alguna cosita, pero he preferido que todo lo que esté esté bien, limpio y, y bonito y he aprovechado para aprofundir al máximo. Hemos compartido también una prueba con, con todo el público. Me ha salido muy bien, el resultado ha acompañado. Ahora esto no significa nada, mañana hay mucho más trabajo y mañana sí tiene que seguir a tope. Yes, as you can see, first day of the competition with ups and downs. Let's see what it will be today. While the contestants are working on their hashtag taste and hashtag bonbon, this means that by the end of the day, the jury will announce the top 10 of super finalists, those who will make it to day number three and the last assignment to become the world uh, master chef, the world chocolate master chef. But for the moment, let's get ready for the first round of presentations on the hashtag taste. See each other back at 9.59.